Ballpark Nation presents go, go Welcome to Go Go Astros, your look at the two-time World Series champions from three guys who have been here since Art Howe had hair. Well, that was certainly something. Um, my favorite novelty songs is by uh, Harry Chapin Jr., uh, 30,000 Pounds of Bananas, and... Uh, one point, one of the characters in the song says, boy, sure must have been something. And uh, there was a lot of something in last night's game. I'd like to start by noting uh, Brian Arbor here, a Go Go Astros podcast with another one of our short hops about an Astros 4-3 victory. And just calling it a 4-3 turning victory is uh, underselling last night's game. Um, so first thing to note here is in solidarity with Jose Altuve, I am doing this podcast with only one shoe on. I have my right shoe on and my left shoe off. Again, solidarity came. Uh, second, uh, I was going to two base replacement in the game was Greg Kessinger, who won, scored the game winning run, and then two made the biggest play of the game with that sliding grab uh, on the uh, hard many machine, uh, grounder <clears throat> turned into a fielder's choice. Uh, Greg Kessinger is an Ole Miss legend. He is from essentially the Manning family of Ole Miss baseball, including you get the level of Ole Miss baseball versus football in relation to uh, his family there. So uh, uh, this is painful for an LSU fan to say, but Gray, to you today, I say hotty toddy. Um, one thing we talked about on the podcast this week, and I think it's worth sort of noting, the Padres are a really good team. And... Um, they are a big contender in the in the National League, and if things work out their way, we could see them again. In fact, I kind of hinted at that on the big pod on Monday, and you see that because they have two things that are, well, very similar to the Astros. One is they have really excellent starting pitching. Uh, Michael King has been uh, was part of what they got uh, for Juan Soto, and between him and Dylan Cease, who we'll see today, who they actually took some of the pieces they got in the Soto trade and traded it at the White Sox for Cease. Uh, they really helped stabilize their rotation. Um, and again, that's been part of it. The other thing is they don't strike out much. And there's really a lot of battling at bats here. And uh, that's particularly true. But the pitch, the Astros also have good starting pitching. And really, I think the as much as the story was about umpiring and Altuve's foot and Greg Kessinger and you know, the wild pitches, um, the most important player, uh, the most valuable player in uh, last night's game was Hunter Brown. He did have the one port pitch to Machado, which resulted in a two-run tying home run, but um, two runs over six innings, a quality start. Uh, Hunter Brown has really turned, uh, turned his season around. You know, he did that a long time ago. He's really emerged into a, a top flight starting pitcher and Broadly, the resurrection of the pitching staff after a terrible first month is the biggest reason why the Astros are. Um, hey, I can go to my OLS part now. Five games up in the American League, uh, in the American League West, because uh, if you had two screens on last night, but I had two screens on and on my second screen, I had the Yankees in Seattle. And uh, how did it go for the Mariners last night? Pitching, p- a position player pitched. That's how it went for the Mariners last night. Astros pick up a game, pick up two in the magic number, which is down to seven. So, again, um, a a nice night to win because you got the bonus with the Mariners lost. The Mariners are, at this point, more likely to win the wild card and still need to get hot for that. And uh, the Yankees went to town on uh, Mariners starter Brian Wu because it's not for the Yankees when we get to the playoffs, but they're a really good offensive team. Um, one last point I think is sort of important to note here. There's a sabermetric concept that uh, talk about sometimes, doesn't get much in sort of the mainstream, which is the notion of sequencing, which is at individual events you want, you know, lots of hits and you don't want outs, but also how they're put together has an effect on, on run scoring. And we saw that in the 10th inning last night where the Astros recorded three outs on a Soft ground at a first base, a pop fly, and a strikeout. If you reverse those, if the strikeout happened first, the pop fly to second happened second, and the ground to first happened third, it's unclear the Astros score a run. 
it did get a single from Yiner Diaz in there, so that sort of complicates it. But sort of the sequence, and they run those backwards, same results as far as what the hitters do, different results on the scoreboard with, again, Kessinger, who, because he substituted for Altuve after his ejection, uh, was the Manfred man at second base. But a similar thing happened in the bottom of the inning on the two ground balls up the middle. With nobody out in the infield in, Hector Neris induced a soft grounder from uh, Luis Arise, which Jerry Pena was able to quickly field, hold the uh, Padres runner Tyler Wade at third base, uh, tossed to Kessinger at second to get the lead runner. The hard hit ball, if the infield's down on that ball by Machado, it certainly gets through a run scores and, you know, maybe two run score. If the bases were loaded at that point, but the infield got to play normal position. Greg Kessinger made a nice play. So always, again, we talked about how one run games, the Astros have done poorly in one run games this year. That's not a character flaw. That's not something wrong with them. It's the kind of thing that just happens. Last night, it just happened. It happened in, despite all the weirdness of the rest of the game, it happened in ways that worked out to the Astros' advantage. They play uh, 640 here uh, in the East Coast, 540 Houston time uh, today. So an unusual start time, afternoon game on the West Coast, late afternoon game on the West Coast. Um, and um, after that, they come home. So Astros up five. Worst case they can be is up four. Uh, heading into the final nine games of the season, magic number seven. In the end, that's what matters after last night.